Welcome back to Annie Quest. This is my recap for the anime The Undead Adventurer. If you enjoy my recaps, please think about subscribing. The story begins with an adventurer who's brave and powerful and makes his way through a dungeon. And let me tell you, his jaw practically hits the floor when he comes face to face with this horrifying winged monster. I mean this thing is straight up terrifying with a mouth inside of its mouth when screams. Ren has never been so scared in his entire life, and it finally dawns on him that he's not gonna survive this encounter. This giant Dragon Ball-looking beast starts heading his way, and he's shaking like a leaf. He can't believe this crap is happening to him, especially when he thought he was gonna achieve his goal of becoming a top-tier mythical-class adventurer. But now that dream's about to get a whole lot harder because this beast chomps down on him with both of its mouths. Sometime later, Ren is shocked to find out that he's somehow still alive. But let me tell you, that shock doesn't even come close to the bone-rattling horror he feels when he realizes he's nothing more than a freaking skeleton. I mean the poor guy is empty inside, and he lets out a scream that would send chills down your spine. A look into the past shows a time when our brave boy still had flesh and organs. He had no idea what was coming his way, so he was all optimistic and ready to tackle another awesome day as an adventurer. It's seriously early in the morning because that's how adventurers roll, but he couldn't help but envy those fancy nobles and scholars who could sleep in all day. Ren is what they call a low bronze class adventurer. He grew up in this tiny town that's not even on the map and has to travel to the next town to find work. The Adventurer's Guild hooks them up with jobs based on their rank and skills, probably so the morons don't get themselves killed. There are a ton of jobs, from kick-ass monster slaying to boring material gathering. Now there are these lazy losers who look like they crawled out of a dumpster, and they call out to our hero and Ren explains that he will be going back to the labyrinth because there aren't any good jobs. Those good-for-nothing slobs can't understand how Ren can work so damn hard, so they scurry off to play Fortnite. Ren explains that while most adventurers like to up and party, he prefers going solo. Why? Because he's just not that good. He's been at this adventuring for 10 years, and he's still stuck at the bronze rank, which is second to last. He makes a living by selling the stuff he collects from those cautious jobs he takes, but he is very frugal. This guy lives a pretty dull life, always trying to be careful, and he tries to be conscious of every move he makes. He went into the maze, but today, his calm and analytical mind took a vacation, because he stumbled upon something that shouldn't have been possible. As he trudged through the labyrinth, he noticed a hole in the wall. It wasn't marked on the map, so Ren figured it must be a new passage created by the maze. This was a huge find, but it also happened when his brain decided to take a break. So against better judgment, he ventured into the risky hidden room. The deeper he went, the more convinced he became that it was an unexplored area. All he could think about was the incredible treasures that might be waiting for him here, ready to be discovered. Little did he know that there was likely something guarding these riches. Even if he couldn't find any loot for himself, just reporting this information to the guild would fetch him a hefty sum of money. So he kept exploring the dungeon without a care in the world. He ventured into this dangerous dungeon without any backup or a way to scout for potential dangers. His recklessness got him into trouble when he came face to face with a dragon. And this wasn't just any dragon, but a majestic and terrifying creature. According to legends, dragons can take on various forms, often straying from the typical dragon image. But as it slowly approached Ren, even though he had never seen one in person, he was certain it was a dragon. Its mere presence was enough to paralyze Ren in fear. Even if he managed to muster the courage to fight against a monster of such caliber, as a low-ranking adventurer, our boy didn't stand a chance. Back to the present, Ren wonders how he is still alive after being devoured. This is some crazy undead business going on. He starts questioning if he's even alive because he's just a skeleton now. Yeah, he's one of them immortal monsters, an undead. Sounds pretty cool at first, but then he realizes that any but a bishop or priest could easily destroy him with their purification magic because undead ain't meant to be in this world. Ren's mind is racing, and he's all saying, am I dead or what? But here's the twist, even though he's just bones, Ren still got his consciousness and memories intact, so he must be alive to some extent. He can't figure out all these existential questions, so he's say, I'm getting out of here. But then he realizes that if he goes back to town, he's gonna end up in a whole lot of trouble. They'll capture him and probably execute him. Ren doesn't want to die just yet, but then he starts questioning his existence again. This guy can't catch a break, but he decides to ignore all his problems and get out of the room as soon as possible. As he leaves, Ren explains the mysteries of the labyrinths. Nobody knows where these things come from or how they work. There are many all around the world, and they're packed with valuable loot. But watch out, because monsters are lurking around every freaking corner. 
Everyone is busy exploring some new labyrinth right now, but solo adventurers will be showing up in a few days. Ren figures he'll ask them for help, but then he's like, wait a moment, I gotta figure out how to talk without a tongue. Just when he's pondering this, a real skeleton monster shows up, looks like Brock from the anime One Piece, and Ren prepares to fight Brook. But damn, he can barely move because he's so dang heavy. Turns out that being a pile of bones ain't exactly great for mobility. And he determines that it must have something to do with his lack of muscles and all the other stuff non-dead people have. Now Ren was a bit of a weakling when he was human, and now he's even worse off. These skeletons were pretty easy for him to defeat as a human, but now he can't even lift his sword without falling over. He's afraid because he's vulnerable, but then he realizes that Dumbrook is even worse off than him. Ren can't pull off any fancy sword moves anymore, you know he's just floating bones. But he remembers he can use this spirit energy thing. Luckily, it still works even though he ain't human anymore. He taps into that energy and boosts his physical abilities. With his attack power amped up, Ren smashes Brook's skull to bits. But he gets shocked when the thing starts to glow. Our boy wonders what the hell is going on here. He realizes that regain the spirit energy he used, and wonders what could be happening. He remembers his research friends talking about how monsters can become more powerful with age and experience. But they're on a whole different level than what humans can achieve. Like a skeleton will always be a skeleton. But in some super rare cases, it can evolve into a ghoul. It's all about this thing called existential evolution. Which is what she's been studying. Ren thinks he can use this to his advantage because ghouls have flesh and look almost exactly like humans. So if he could transform into one, he might be able to sneak back into the city by disguising himself with a robe and a mask or something. So now his new goal is to slay monsters in this dungeon and become a ghoul. Back in town, we see Ren's friend feeling bummed, because he never showed up, so she decides to just make dinner for herself. But down in the dungeon, Ren is on fire. He's already taken down five skeletons and he's leveling up like crazy, gaining more experience and agility. The light he absorbs seems to have some kind of healing effect, so he can keep using his spirit power non-stop. With things going so well, Ren figures it might be time to take on one of the tougher monsters in the labyrinth. He's walking through the halls when he comes face to face with a slime. Now slimes are tough cookies because they're resistant to physical attacks, but they're weak against magic. The problem is, Ren ain't exactly a wizard. He doesn't have any offensive magic skills, so he's gotta rely on good old physical attacks. There are two ways he can beat the slime. He can either break through the slime's core that is constantly moving around in its squishy body, or just keep pounding it until it can't regenerate anymore. But let me tell you, he's not strong enough to do that normally. He's gotta go all out. The slime starts launching these acid balls at Ren, trying to dissolve him but manages to dodge them. Then he goes in for a strike, and lucky for him, he hits the slime's core and defeats it. He grabs a magic stone as his prize and collects the slime because it's used as a cosmetic to make ugly people less ugly. Back at the guild, there's a receptionist who's asked if she can help a new adventurer find a good party to join. But unfortunately, there ain't any parties that fit the bill, so she's thinking of asking Ren to look after her. The thing is he hasn't shown up in town since yesterday, which is kinda weird for him. In the maze, Ren explains how he doesn't feel things like sleep or hunger, which is fine because anything he eats would probably just pass through his bones. He's been fighting non-stop, but it's clear that evolving on a deeper level takes a mighty long time. However, his physical abilities have returned, and he can even use mana, which is pretty surprising for an undead like him. Besides healing injuries and illnesses, his divine powers can also purify water and delay the spoiling of food. Ren uses it to make some bread last for three more days, hoping that by then he'll have a normal body that needs to eat bread. But for now, he's focused on his goal and thinks about how many monsters he can take on at once. Being a cautious fella, he decides that if he comes across more than four monsters, he will run. Encountering more than five in this low-level labyrinth would spell the end for him. Ren starts feeling down about his weakness, even after being an adventurer for a solid 10 years and training for 20. He's got spirit energy, mana, and divinity at his disposal. Even the highest-ranked adventurers rarely have all three. But Ren wishes he could've just one strong power. Usually, folks like him who ain't cut out for adventuring would've given up by now. But not Ren, he's been trying every single day, without fail, trying to make it work. He even had that one girl teaching him about monsters and magic. He's been relentlessly pushing himself to achieve his goal of becoming a mythical class adventurer, the highest rank there is. And not even naturally gifted people reach it easily. At that rank, you'll find legends who've saved entire nations. Ren's dead set on becoming one of them, and not even being turned into a skeleton will stop him. 
as he keeps taking out more skeletons. Our boy wonders if he's getting stronger than when he was a human. He eventually deals with another slime with ease and becomes certain that he is getting stronger. Ren gathers some more slime goo, but stops when the light comes out of it. Our boy feels something really weird happening to his body as the energy flows into him and all his muscles grow back. He's become a ghoul man. He's excited, even though his face can't show it. But now he's got skin again, even if it's all dried up and decaying. But if he keeps at it, he might eventually turn into a vampire. And by then, he'll look just like a regular human. He can go back to his normal life. But for now, having more than just bones means he can talk again. Though he's gotta practice to get good at it. Sometime later, we find our flesh having boy, as he's straight up brawling with some goblins. These chunky goblins are seriously gnarly when they roll in a big gang. But Rent makes clever use of the dungeon's layout to isolate a couple. He's evolved into a freaking ghoul now and has finally gained some muscle. He's faster than ever, now he's more agile than when he was just a bag of bones. But what's really mind-blowing is that his mana, spirit energy, and divinity, yeah, all that mystical mojo, have shot through the roof. Our hero's leveling up like crazy, because now he can buff himself and even his sword. And he's putting that power to good use by decapitating those goblins, one by one. He's starting to wonder if he's stronger now than when he was a regular human. Suddenly, Rent hears a ruckus in the distance, and guess what? It's that girl from the guild. This blondie baby is making mincemeat out of a weak-ass skeleton monster, and Rent feels a surge of joy, as it's been ages since he last laid eyes on a human. But he's gotta hold himself back because he's a straight-up hideous ghoul, his skin barely clinging to his body. If he saunters up to her like this, she'll either try to off him or bolt. So he decides to creepily watch her from a distance instead, even though he barely looks alive. He realizes he's never seen her before. Rent figures she must be a rookie, because he knows practically every adventure in town. He's familiar with them because adventurers can be a tough crowd. They like to make fun of weaklings like Rent, so it's helpful to know their abilities and who their pals are. So he keeps shadowing her, like a super subtle stalker, and sees her run into another skeleton. He can tell she's got some training under her belt, but she's still weak sauce and needs to land a ton of hits. Rent notices she's laser focused on her target, but ain't paying squad attention to her surroundings. Big mistake, because now she's pinned against the wall. But this chick's got grit, and she's dead set on becoming a true adventurer. She fights back like a freaking hero, but that skeleton's just too much for her. With no other choice, Rent hauls ass to save her, and she's totally gobsmacked when she sees his ugly ghoul mug. Rent hopes she'll seize the opportunity to attack the distracted skeleton, but this girl is pretty damn useless. So he cuts the skeleton in half like a boss and rushes to check on her. Unfortunately, his voice still sounds like a zombie, so she freaks out when he tries to tell her his name. Rent makes it crystal clear that he's not her enemy by tossing his sword and I finally realize she gets that he's trying to talk. He explains that he is an adventurer and she wonders are you disguised or something. Rent can't really explain what the hell happened because he died but somehow he's still alive. She can see he ain't like the mother monsters so she's grateful as hell for him saving her. Rent's gotta convince this scared girl that he ain't gonna end her life but he does need her help. She agrees to buy him a robe so he can return to town and when she does, He's like, you keep the change baby. This girl introduces herself as Rena, the daughter of some knight, and she promises to do this for him, as payback for saving her sorry ass. She leaves, but Rent can't help but notice how damn cautious she is around him. Most adventurers would rat out a mysterious ghoul like himself to the guild, but Rent believes this girl he just met won't betray him. But guess what? She hauls ass straight to the guild as soon as she gets to town. The guild lady from before is all worried about her, and Rena spilled that she's got an urgent question to ask. Back in the dungeon, Rent's kicking slime ass left and right. He finally realizes he's way stronger now than when he was all human. Not only that, his body moves exactly how he wants it to. Rent smashes another slime by hitting its core, and he starts wondering if his eyesight's getting better too. He figures it's some kind of combat intuition that you can't learn from training or books. It's ironic as hell that he only got the power he always wanted after ending up in this disgusting corpse body. And just when he least expects it, Rena pops back up. Rent's gotta reassure her that he ain't just some other ghoul lurking around her. He explains that ghouls don't show up on the early dungeon levels like this. She can tell he's gotten a bit smoother with his words, and our boy's like, yeah, been practicing my speech game baby. Rena comes through with some fresh clothes, but she gets all jumpy when she tries to hand him the leftover cash. She apologizes for still being terrified of him because it's terrifying. Let's be real, he's creepy, and she says she'll eventually get used to it. 
he thinks she did an awesome job picking out his clothes because the robe hides his whole body and makes him look like some mage or something. This super nice person got him some other things as well, and she explained that she had to ask someone where all the stores were, because she was new in town. Besides the boots and gloves, she also brought some band-aids. This meat really thinks of everything and tells him he can use them to wrap his arms and legs. It hits Rent right in the feels, but his worn-out body can't even shed a tear. Rent puts on all the gear and damn, he's actually looking pretty fly. It's way easier to move around than he expected, although he's gotta admit his visibility's taken a hit. However, he'll still be able to fight though, so he tells Rena it's all good. She makes a pretty bad move, by showing him his now ugly face, but surprise. She brought him a mask. Rena knew his face was hard to handle, so she got him one. That mask slaps itself onto his face like it knows exactly how badly his face needs to be hidden. And Rent's freaking out because that thing won't come off. They both start panicking and this clueless girl's like, well, now that I think of it, that shop did seem kinda sketchy. It wasn't one of the shops her friend told her about, but she bought it because it was dirt cheap. Only cost her three measly copper coins. But she swears she checked it for curses. Nothing happened when she touched it. But Rent figured that mask must have a curse that kicks in once it's on your face. Rena's mind is blown when she sees Rent can use divine powers, and he's wondering if he can break the curse now that he's got more divinity. Sadly, he runs out of juice, so she says sorry. Rent explains that the mask reacted to his divine mojo, so all he's gotta do is save up some cash and ask a badass cleric to break the curse. He tries to comfort her, but then he remembers he's a freaking monster and takes a step back. But Rena stops him dead in his tracks because she's finally realized that Rent ain't no evil dude. She says she ain't scared anymore, but damn, she's still trembling like crazy. Rent tells her she doesn't gotta force herself and that she can take her sweet time getting used to him being a rotting and messed up zombie. Rena swears it won't take long, and they start making their way back to town. On the way, Rena explains that there weren't any jobs for rookies like herself in the city, so she came to Malt. Our boy is still surprised she made the trek to the countryside, but she explains she's Trina see the whole damn world. Her main goal is to get swole and become a badass adventurer real quick. Rent suggests that an adventurer should be a chicken like him, because hey you only have one life, she agrees for some reason, and jokes about how zombies like him are like burnt out bulbs. This is rare. So they both crack up like it's the funniest thing ever. When they roll up in Malt, Rent points out that he's known by a bunch of folks there, so if he flashes his ID, they'll smell something fishy. They decide to use another entrance, and Rent thanks his new buddy, saying he wouldn't have made it this far without her. She acts all nonchalant, but he spills that he's a freaking monster, and if she helps him sneak into town, she could end up in deep shit, losing her adventurer's license. But this girl's got determination. She explains that if it wasn't for him, she'd be six feet under, that skeleton would have done her in. So risking her life for him this one time is no biggie. At the west entrance, they confirm their identities as adventurers, but one of the guards has a problem with Rent's freaky appearance. Things get hella tense as they demand Rent take off his mask. Brilliantly, Rena steps in and spins this tale about the mask being cursed, impossible to remove. She adds that his voice got all messed up because of a monster attack, and Rent shows them his messed up ear as proof. Rena tells them he bought the mask to hide his gnarly scars, but turns out it's cursed as hell. The guards feel like total assholes for his rotten luck, and Rent even offers to let them try yanking the mask off. When their weak-ass attempt fails, the guard lets Rent through. Rent gives credit to Rena for their epic victory, but she just brushes it off, saying it's all part of her repayment. But right then, Rent pulls a vanishing act. He watches her frantically searching for him like a fool, but deep down, he knows she's a good kid. She's decked out in cheap gear, but she takes care of it real well. She's a solid fighter, and she ain't dumb. Most importantly, she's got guts, so he's sure she'll make a kick-ass adventurer. Rent explains that anyone he knew with her kind of talent eventually ditched him. He's gotta leave her behind for now, but once he looks a bit more human, he promises to apologize to her face to face. Later on, we find out why Rent ditched Rena. He heads to a spot where he's got a more suitable human partner, someone with a bit of past who can be trusted to keep secrets. Ren casually strolls into a house and finds his perfect human partner named Lorraine. He tries waking her up with his messed up voice, but she straight up refuses. He threatens to drop a book on her noggin, so she knows it's Ren, but when she peeps him all covered up, she's hella surprised. Ren shocks her by just showing his freaky ass arm. Looking back just a minute ago, Lorraine was all worried about Ren, thinking about sending a guild to search for him. But then Ren knocks on the damn door, and she's wondering why he didn't just walk in like usual. 
She figures something must have gone down, so she plays it cool, pretending to be asleep as he comes in. She's so damn relieved that he's still kicking it. But now, in the present, Lorraine starts doubting his whole story, but she's never heard of anyone getting chomped by a dragon and turning into a damn undead. She ain't got no choice but to believe him though. I mean what else can she do? She's seen some crazy stuff in her research, but never heard of someone getting chomped by a dragon and turning into an undead. She's skeptical as hell, but she's gotta roll with it. Ren's amazed at how chill she is, but I guess that's what you'd expect from an academic mage adventurer. But it's pretty damn clear that she's looking at him more like a lab rat than a friend right now. And then she hits him with a shocker, asking if he's really the same Ren now that he's undead. Ren tries to explain that he's got the same memories and mind as before, but his old body's a goner. He ain't got a clue if he's the same person or not. It's a mind-boggling question, so he pushes it aside and tells Lorraine that he still wants to be an adventurer. Even with his rotting corpse look Ren's dead set on becoming Mithril no matter what. Lorraine, being a genius, can tell that he wants her to take on jobs for him since he can't stroll into the guild looking like a zombie and he can't crash at the inn either. So she offers him a place to crash at her pad, but she wants him to help out with her research as payment. She knows he's gonna be hella valuable because nobody's had the chance to study a monster with existential evolution like him. Ren agrees, but only if she promises not to slice him open for study. The next day, Ren cuts out the middleman and pays for the magic stones and slime goo he scored from the dungeon straight up. It ain't cheap, but it's because Ren always brings top-notch materials. He's feeling good with his pockets full of money and decides to hit up the blacksmith. But his happiness fades really quickly when he notices that people are straight up scared of him. At the blacksmith's, Ren apologizes for his messed up appearance with his weird ass voice. He wants a new sword, and the blacksmith can tell from his old sword that he uses magic or spirit energy. Ren then totally shocks her when he spills the beans that he actually uses magic, spirit energy and divinity. She's like, wow, being able to do all three of those things is super rare. You're only the second person ever to come into our store with that kind of power. The shop owner, Klope, takes a lot of pride in his work and will want to chat with Ren a few times while making the sword, which will take a few days. Back at home, Lorraine starts doing some serious research on ghouls. Turns out these suckers are super strong and can survive being decapitated and junk. They're all about chowing down on animal meat, especially humans. And get this, sometimes these big, bad monsters can turn humans into lesser undead creatures, but those poor souls lose everything. Their personalities, their human will, and their emotions are gone in a flash. But Ren he's like a whole different story bro. And Lorraine thinks it's highly unlikely that he's the same person he was before. But even though he's all undead, she still feels that connection to him, and he's still Ren to her deep down. Let's take a trip down memory lane. We see when they first met, and Ren's skin wasn't falling off his body. Lorraine just took a job, and some guy asked her to take young Ren with her. He was a newbie, so she didn't have to pay him or anything. He just needed some experience. Lorraine explains how the world bored her to tears even after she became the youngest person ever to be called a great doctor. But that title didn't mean squat to her. Being a great doctor lets you register as a silver class adventurer, but she bounced to a distant country without telling anyone because she had nothing better to do. During one of their adventures, they stumble upon this rare plant that Lorraine's gotta handle with care. But guess what? Ren being the wild card he is, goes and picks a whole bunch of them, not knowing the delicate touch needed. Lorraine was gonna scold him, but then she sees that he did it flawlessly like a freaking pro. And just when they're chilling, this ugly goblin shows up, sticking its big nose where it doesn't belong. But Ren's always got a trick up his sleeve, and Ren tells her to use a certain spell, she does it, and Ren is blown away by how powerful silver rank magic is. The next morning, Lorraine tells Ren that ain't her first rodeo. She's only flustered because she usually rolls deep with a bunch of bodyguards. Then Lorraine realizes something, and Ren spills the beans. Everyone's worried about her going solo, so they tell Ren to go with her. 
Someone once told Ren to read up on plants and monsters, and he's been doing it ever since. So Lorraine asks him to school her in that too. He's got mad skills maneuvering through the forest, so she wants to learn that as well. Ren agreed, and that's how their journey began. He's been grinding every single day for the past decade, aiming to reach Mithril class. And she's been right there by his side, indulging in her research passion. Back at the shop, Ren gives props to the blacksmith for agreeing to forge his sword and cautiously shakes the man's hand. The blacksmith hooks him up with a temporary sword that can tap into both magic and spirit energy. Luca can sense that Ren's in deep trouble, wondering why he won't just come to them for help. Clope figures he's gotta be cursed real bad, and Ren's worried it might mess up their shop. Ren ain't one to cause trouble for others, so he's been keeping his identity on the low. But the fact that he can harness all kinds of power, plus his tight bond with Lorraine, helped him realize who he truly is. Later on, Ren and Lorraine chow down on a feast whipped up by Chef Burak. But Ren ain't got no appetite, because he never gets hungry. Lorraine explains that Ren is on a whole other level compared to regular ghouls, and it's gotta be connected to why he can evolve existentially. She's wondering what Ren's next evolution will be, but he's clueless. Ren wants to stay as close to humans as possible, so the first step is to evolve himself. That means he's gotta head back into the labyrinth, slay monsters, and grow stronger. In the labyrinth, some dude's getting his ass handed to him by a slime, and Ren shows up just in the nick of time to save his sorry ass. The guy gives Ren props because he barely escaped with a scratch. Ren bounces right after, thinking about how adventurers gotta fend for themselves. Ain't nobody obligated to help them, and if they bite the dust, it's on them. And to top it off, there are even scumbags who pretend to be in trouble just to rob the adventurers who come to their rescue. Anyway, so Ren still tries to lend a hand whenever he can. The dude he just saved can tell that Ren is seriously strong, and asks if he can join Ren's crew. Turns out this guy just signed up as an adventurer, but he's actually a chef. He owns a restaurant, but he's deep in debt and needs to cough up 15 gold by next week. Desperate as hell, he was willing to do whatever it took to get into a party, but nobody gave him a shot. That's why he rolled up to this labyrinth because the word on the street is you can do it solo. Ren knows deep down that's only true if you're already pretty strong, so he's about to turn the guy down. But then, Ren has a change of heart and decides to give the dude a shot. The guy thanks Ren, saying he can depend on him, but Ren notices this dude's nasty wound. Ren starts thinking damn, sometimes he's scared he ain't really himself. Ren takes the dude to this secret entrance, where he was in this place earlier, but he's bummed to see the dragon ain't there no more. And that's not the only letdown because there are no magical goodies to be found either. But they stumble upon another hidden passage. Homeboy whose name we don't know starts thinking they could make a fortune if they spill the beans to the guild. But then he takes it back and says Ren would get all the credit. Ren doesn't give a damn about glory though, and tells the guy to say he found it while they were exploring. They come across an empty room, and this dude wants to keep searching for treasure. That's when a magic circle pops up on the ground, and Ren tries to stop him from stepping right into it. This fool suddenly gets all cocky and tells Ren it's all good because there ain't no monsters around. Ren realizes this dude doesn't even see the damn magic circle but it's too late because it teleports him somewhere. Ain't no telling where he ended up, but usually those teleports lead to floors crawling with monsters or places full of deadly traps. The smart move would be to ditch this numbskull, but that'd make him just as bad as a real monster. Ren decides to go after him and steps into the teleportation circle. And what does he find? This unconscious doofus and a frigging massive skeleton. Now Ren knows this is a boss room, and he's gearing up for a battle against this ginormous monster. Ren strengthens himself to land an attack, but it doesn't do anything. He realizes the giant skeleton ain't vulnerable to spirit energy, so he gives magic a shot, but that fails too. The exit vanished, meaning this was one of the rooms where adventurers were stuck till they beat the boss. Ren ain't no quitter, so he tries something else. His sword might not hold up against the next hit, but the skeleton being undead means divinity should work against it. He goes for a divinity-powered attack, 
and the skeleton comes crashing down. Ren follows up with another divinity attack on its skull, and the fight ends. Ren patches up the clueless side character, and he is hella shocked seeing Ren take down the giant. Ren loots a massive magic stone from it, proving to the dude that the monster is even more powerful than he thought. This dude straight up thinks Ren is amazing, and Ren offers to let him have the giant magic stone. But Ren wants something in return and shows the dude his messed up skin. He only mentions a monster did it, but explains he needs the dude to run errands to shops and the guild for him. The deal still feels one-sided, so Ren asks to eat and drink for free at the dude's restaurant whenever he wants. The dude thinks it's a dumb question because there ain't no doubt he gonna let Ren eat and drink there for free. His restaurant gonna thrive because of Ren, so he promises to work his ass off to keep it open. This dude can't see magic circles like Ren, so Ren tells him to just walk toward the door to head home. Ren wanna keep exploring but decides it gotta wait till next time. The dude takes Ren to his restaurant, and his wife is hella relieved seeing him safe. She worries about her hubby getting played again when she spots the giant stone, but the dude explains that even though Ren looks like some evil dude, he is actually a stand-up guy. This guy finally introduces himself as Loris, and they thank Ren for his help. Ren hesitates to drop his name, but Loris swears he won't spill it to anyone. Ren tells him, and Loris explains that he will have a hot meal ready for him whenever he wants. As Ren leaves, some weird shit starts going down. His wish is for Loris to be a villain with no family because he gotta test something, and he'd rather test it on someone wicked. Ren ain't Trina get close to the dude, so that's why he never asked for his name. Ren starts chanting Lorraine's name again and again, getting all worried when something starts taking control of his body. Ren heads home, but he barely responds when Lorraine tries talking to him. She wondered if he was cool and if he just telling her he was happy. Ren then surprisingly embraces her, and Lorraine wonders if he is drunk. There is clearly something wrong, and Ren shockingly bites down on her neck. Lorraine pushes him off, and the beastly Ren says it tastes damn good. Lorraine knows the real Ren is still in there somewhere, so she just knocks him out. She gonna let him sleep for now and wait for his apology when he wakes up. Lorraine would rather he grab her like that when he is sober since she will let him devour her anytime he likes. When Ren wakes up, he no longer feels like something is controlling him, and he apologizes. Lorraine brushes it off as an accident and just wants to know what he remembers. Ren remembers meeting some dude in a dungeon and thinking he looked damn tasty. Lorraine looked delicious too, so he couldn't resist. Lorraine surprisingly expected this since ghouls prefer human flesh and blood. She thinks they both need some rest, but Ren insists on seeing the damage he caused. Lorraine just sold all her potions, so she gotta wait till morning to treat the wound. Ren ain't satisfied with that though, and the sage straight up heals her instead. Lorraine is hella amazed seeing how much divinity he can use now and explains she has never been healed by it before. She was hella shocked seeing all the pain gone, but our boy ain't done yet because he also got rid of the scar. Lorraine notices Ren's body changing, to the point where he can pass off his once ugly body as just having old wounds. Ren's mask shockingly changes shape somehow, so he realizes he gotta hide his face. The mask changes shape once more, and Lorraine starts wondering if it responding to Ren's desires. Ren finds that he can control its transformation, but he still can't remove it. Lorraine can't even yank it off, but that's cool because he still gotta hide his face anyway. It's also easier for Ren to talk clearer now, so he wondering if his existence evolved or something. It would make sense because he whooped a strong monster's ass, but last time he evolved right after beating a monster too. Lorraine mulls it over and surprisingly thinks he evolved because he fed on her flesh and blood. That would make even more sense because now he looks less like a ghoul and more like a ghast. Ghasts are the vampire's servants and they are even weaker than the weakest vampires. Ren wonders why his transformation going in this direction, and Lorraine points out that the origins of existential evolution are a total mystery, even to the smartest academics. Ren hella eager to hear her theory about what going on, so they decide to skip sleep. Ren started as a skeleton, then turned into a ghoul. Existential evolution is when a monster transforms into a stronger being. But a ghoul ain't the only thing stronger than a skeleton, because there be skeleton soldiers, skeleton knights, and all sorts of other stuff. Why existential evolution goes one way or another, nobody knows, but she figures the monster evolves into the form it desires. Ren kept saying he wanted to become more human, so he became a ghoul. 
Ren thinks this would make more sense if he became a vampire since a vampire looks more human than a ghast. That's true, but Lorraine compares existential evolution to ranks in a guild. You can't go from bronze to gold straight away, so she predicts that Ren gotta meet certain conditions before he can be a vampire. Experiments on smaller monsters showed their evolution adapting to their environment. In a volcano area, they turn into something with mad fire skills, and near water, they turn into something with sick water skills. With all this info, Ren wonders if he can become a vampire one day if he works his ass off, and even go beyond that and become human again. Lorraine predicts that further evolution gonna involve more than just whooping monsters. Just like how he became a ghast by chowing down on her flesh and blood, there gotta be some condition for becoming a vampire. There's so much they don't know, but Lorraine promises to have his back on the journey. Lorraine gets down to business and needs to check out Ren's body, so she straight up tells him to strip. She planning to use some magic item to take pics of every damn inch of his body and even talking about cutting some of it off. This lady is on some crazy stuff, testing pain and all kinds of other wild experiments. She claims to have a little bit of common sense though, so she decides to let him rest for the night before going all out with her crazy shenanigans tomorrow. The next morning, Ren said he actually feeling damn good. That weird urge he had yesterday gone, but he realized he couldn't go back to the labyrinth with a messed up sword. Clope can't believe he screwed up the sword even more and explains he can't fix it. Ren says he wrecked it because he used divinity on it, but Cloak points out there ain't any enemies in the labyrinth of the moon's reflection that require divinity. Cloak can't believe that Ren ran into a giant skeleton and is even more shocked when Ren reveals that he found an unexplored area. Cloak almost lets Ren's real name slip, but catches himself because he doesn't want Ren to know he knows his true identity. Ren wanna explore the area, and Cloak agrees that nobody should get there before him. The sword Ren asked for ain't ready yet, so Klop decides to lend him a sword that's a bit better than the first one he loaned him. Ren was hella surprised, but Klop explained he one of his top customers. After Ren bounces, he says he knows he can't fool Klop. Klop did hook him up with a sword though, so Ren can't wait to go back to the labyrinth and evolve his existential game. Ren heads home and peeps Loris's tavern doing damn well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.